Good afternoon. My name is James Little from Mass Spec Interpretation Services, and today I would like to share with you a video that I've prepared on using the Agilent Mass Hunter software to perform NIST MSMS searches. This is just an overview of the process. For details, if you really want to learn how to use it, see my complete training at the websites noted below. On this particular handout that I'm creating, it'll have some setups about how to set up the menu, the different parts that you need to have set up to do the search correctly, but I will not discuss them in the video, but I included them in the handout, and there's several pages of that that shows how they're set up, and be sure to save your settings when you get through your configuration so you don't have to set it up every time you use it. The other thing is I'll only be using the NIST libraries supplied with the NIST 23 version today, but I use a lot of other different ones, including many free libraries and several purchased libraries in my work. First thing that I will do in the overview video is to open a file to show you how it is processed. So we're going to Mass Hunter, opening a data file, and I'll open this targeted MSMS file. First thing that you need to do, you'll notice that the baseline is fluctuating. When it goes high, that's probably the MS uh, targeted species. And then in the holes in between is where it's doing the MS MS at three different energies, I think 20, 30, and 40. So the first thing you knew, need to do is extract the chromatograms. So we'll go to the, this menu and go and extract the MS, which is zero energy. And then we'll also extract the chromatograms for MSMS. And so now you can see they're all stacked together. So I can see all three. So if we want to do a search, we'll just, you can get the MS spectrum if you want to see what it looks like. I just select it and then I double left click on it. And you'll see that 305.1101, this is an MH plus addict for this species, but let's go take a look at the MSMS -MS now. So we'll select it, double left click on it, and now you can see here's the MSMS -MS spectrum, and this is actually the average of I think 20, 30, and 40. I didn't separate them out. I'll just take the whole thing to the MS search. You can see the molecular precursor ion at 305.1094, and then you can see the fragment ions. To do the NIST MSMS -MS search, you select the spectrum you want with your cursor on the left click. You open it with a right click and say search using NIST MS program. It'll automatically start the search and bring the program into focus if it's not already, not already actually open at that point. And if you look below, this is our unknown at the top that we brought in that we imported from the Agilent software. And if we click on this bottom box here, that's their best hit, and it's shown in the bottom. In the middle is this butterfly display that shows the unknown on the top and the best hit on the bottom. If you want to, I always like to step through a couple of those. So I went over and selected the bottom one, best hit, and I just start searching through. So that dropped off to 740 for the score. But you can see it's the same compound uh, over and over again, actually, for from different libraries, different spectra, different energies. I think there's actually six, seven, oh, there's a bunch of them. Uh, so if you wanted to just see different compounds, then you have to go up to the top and say best matching only. And what that does is it gets rid of things with the same CAS number. So when you step through them, you won't have as many duplicates to look at. So the next one is actually a different compound now. Uh, so you can see that the fit's fallen off dramatically. So let's go back and just open it back up again so we have them all below uh, to see them all. Let's go look and see what type search we did. We can go into the search options here, and you can see we did a high resolution with no precursor. Uh, if you want to, you could do an MSMS and specify the precursor here. You can see when it brought it in, it didn't bring in the precursor properly, so I'll have to clean, turn off in spectrum and type it in manually, 305.1094, and say OK, and then go up to the top and research it again. And now we'll only be looking for things that come from that precursor, and we still got the same fit. 
And again, we found a lot of duplicates, which again, we can turn off if you want to. Now we only got three when we specified the pre precursor for it. And you can see the next one's another aromatic compound, but not a good fit. So you can see it's very easy to do searches here. Uh, there's another thing that you interact with a lot is this funnel up here. And that allows you to uh, funnel a lot of things, enable filtering of your searches such that you only see M plus H's or other type of ion addicts, or you can include MS3 spectra that might have a fragment ion that's refragmented, refragmented and matches your structure. You can also specify the polarity, the type of instrument, etc. So that's, that's pretty much uh, gives you an idea of how easy it is to do an MSM search, MSMS search. And if you go back, I'm going up here, it says switch to caller. It's easy to step through all of these and send them. And actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I found very good hits in the, M, the NIST MSMS library for all of them. So I hope you'll use the NIST MS, MS search in your work with whichever vendor you choose. This is from Agilent, but I know that Thermo also does similar things. And also, Waters does similar things. So give it a try and let it help you identify your unknowns. Good day.